So let me just kind of give you an idea. So on all systems normal, everything's clear and fine. Your panel looks like this. You'll have the name of the church, Wonder Lake Bible Church, systems normal, time and date. Let's say you lost power. Um, you know, it's gonna look like this. The screen will be dark. You come to it beeping. You open it up. All you have to do is you see that it has a trouble. You can acknowledge this. You're acknowledging that you understand that it's in trouble. And if you look, it says trouble in system AC fault. Okay. Well, you come to your breaker. As it's marked here, AC power panel F. Your panels weren't marked, so I, I call you. it panel F because it's okay. fires in there. And since okay. you didn't have one, you can call all your other ones A through whatever you want. We've been but, talking about that. And then I have it clearly marked here for the fire department, which is code. Um, so if the breaker wasn't popped, you know, and when you knew the whole building was dead, that's your power failure. But as you see, the panel is really smart and it will tell you what's going on. If it was a little battery issue, same thing. You'll see a system trouble. And then even over here, it even already tells you without even reading the screen, battery, trouble in battery. Well, batteries are good for five years. After five years, whether they're good or bad, they need to be replaced per code. Um, because usually these batteries, even though they, because they're constantly getting charged and trickle charged, they only last about five years and they start. What are those bad. babies run? Do you have any idea? Yeah, they're about forty bucks a piece or something like that. Forty five bucks a piece, I think, are cost when they're on sale and then but now everything's slowly ramping up because <laughs> of the COVID. Oh yeah. Um, now I have two horn circuits and this is your SLC. SLC means singling line circuit. That's data. That's what's talking to all these addressable smokes and, and heats and pull stations. If someone to have, let's say someone cut some wire, NAC1, if there is a trouble, again, everything's smart, it tells you. NAC1 is open. Well, we know NAC1's here, and I know that NAC1 is the gym and everything upstairs. And then we know that NAC2 is by the chapel and then the exterior device. So okay. you have two NAC circuits. So pretty much your system consists of that, your AVs and your SLC. Your AVs are now up to code because we changed them out. Um, they sync, so everything goes in pattern. It flashes at the same time where your old ones were intermittent, intermittent which could, can cause seizures in sick people or people with that condition. So. Today's fire code states you have to have a synced audio visual. That way it doesn't confuse or cause any seizures into people mm. that are, have that illness. So you are totally up to code. Um, any other problems you would see? Like yesterday I tested. If you look here, it's kind of hard to see, but this is fire alarm, CO alarm. If we added a CO detector, things that happen when we go into alarm. Um, it gives you lots of ideas of what's going on, like battery, if you disabled something, there's a communication problem, maintenance is needed. If it says maintenance, as a smoke gets really dirty, the system is smart and it says, hey, this smoke in this location that we've called it, it's getting dirty, it needs to be clean. Maybe someone was doing some drywall work, doing right, something like right. that. So when the system goes an alarm, let's say you, you're here at, on Sunday, now that you know we leave, everything's good, we have a, you know, a young child pulls a pull station, right? It can happen. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see a fire alarm activation. You're gonna see what it is, where it's at. And here's where the rule is of thumb when something like that happens. You, if you know that a kid pulled it, you come down here, you can acknowledge that. That just stops the beeping of the panel. By acknowledging, you acknowledge that you're reading what it said and what's an alarm. Then you can hit alarm <coughs> silence. And when you hit alarm silence, all the horns will stop and the strobes may just flash. Okay. I'd leave it like that. And then let's say right now you're not monitored, so you can go ahead and reset it after you reset the pull station. And I'll show you how to reset a pull station. Um, I have a key in the door, and then I'll, I'll leave a key in here for resetting pull stations if someone pulls one. So we'll leave it right there. Um, 
what happens is then you reset the pull station and you can come down and reset the system and it will go back to all systems normal. When you have monitoring and that starts to happen, if you get an activated pull station and you know a kid pulled it, I would only go to the step that you silence it to stop people from hearing the sound because the fire department's going to want to see what happened. They usually get a little cranky when someone resets and they come here and it says all systems normal because they want to see and know what pull right, station, right. what happened, because they have paperwork that they have to conduct. Right. So they get a little cranky when someone goes ahead and does their job for them. Um, most places don't want you to silence it unless you know beyond reasonable doubt that you, you know that it was a, a malicious pull, right? Right, right? So then they don't mind. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll reset it for you. We'll go ahead and reset it, you know, you know no big deal. Now, if it was a smoke detector, a heat detector in the attic, don't silence it. Even though you're here, you can read it, let them come out. Unless you know for sure it's like a leak in the ceiling and you see water pouring out of it, that, that could cause it to go into an alarm. Really? Yeah, so water damage does horrible things and stuff. Wow. So it'll cause a false alarm all day long. Because it's shorting out. the unit itself. Yeah, if it, yeah. Okay. so let's say you got a, a roof leak right, and right. it starts leaking out a heat detector upstairs. It's going to definitely set it, off. set it off. And then other things will happen. You'll have troubles. This will cause a, sh this will get, you know, this, I'll say short circuit. You'll have all kinds of a nightmare. <laughs> but it's smart. It's telling you, hey, something's wrong. My device is not right. My wiring seems wrong. So it's a very smart thing. What's really nice about this is I can go into, um, and this is where it's good to, if, let's say you had a couple troubles and the fire department calls you or my monitoring because fire department's not going to get a trouble. Let's say at like 2 o'clock on a Sunday a.m. you get like troubles. So you, someone comes out here to check a look and it says all oh, systems normal. Well, what was it? What's great about these panels is it has a built-in memory. So I can hit menu, read status mode 1, System point, zones, see how there's an arrow down? So hit this arrow down. Trouble reminder, timers, max, hit down again. Relays, programming, history, three. Hit history, and I want to view all history, boom. So I see there's my NAC1 fault that I caused earlier, right? right? And it's always a time and date stamp. So that's when it went normal at 8.12 today. Now I can use this arrows and look at there's when it went into trouble at 811. But let's say this was no battery. There's my AC fault that I caused at 810. But let's see what else happened. AC fault cleared. If I keep going back, and you can see 755. That's all for that one. So I need to get more. I cleared the history. So um, resetting system. There we go. Here we go. So here's something you'd see. Clear pull station. There. This is what history looks like when a pull station was activated. Alarm. Pull station. East lobby exit. So again, now everything is to exactly a point to where it's at. So if it was a smoke detector in here, it's going to say basement, FACP, which is fire alarm control panel, slash mechanical room, so you know right where it is. And then it tells you the time and date. Happened at 1.57 a.m. Well, I didn't set the time yet <laughs> at that point. So, But now if I hit next, I can hit this. No, I have to hit this. Then it, someone acknowledged it. It was me. I acknowledged the alarm. And then it, I hit a reset, and now it cleared. So now it's resetting. And then there's my reset, trouble, clear. So everything's time, date, stamp, anything that you do and touch. So that's why if someone by accidentally resets something and the fire department comes, they, they know if you reset it. No, oh, it reset itself. Oh, it did it now. Just know <laughs> that they, they, they know how to do this too. When you want to get out of this, you hit exit, escape. Escape, escape all the way back to the normal. So the only things you really need to know about is what you're reading, acknowledging it, 
You're only going to silence it if it's if you know that it's a false alarm, and you know that for a fact, and then everything else the fire department will handle. Okay, so that's our normal window up there, right? Yep, that's your normal it window. It says? Yep, it says yep. Wonder Lake Bible. This is the room, okay? Yep. It's a little blurry for me. Let me... So you gonna leave this one of your business cards so that Absolutely. Uh, if we need a walkthrough, like sure. a technical. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm working on the panel. What button sure. do I put? So I can, Just... I can tell you something else too. Let's say you know you're gonna work on the system. I programmed in a little hot button. So it's not always good to pop these in and off like that. Um, it's wear and tear on, you, you plug this in a hundred times, right? So let's say, like I said, you have to have, by code, you have to have a fire alarm inspection once a year. If I take this off once a year in 10 years, you know, it's a lot of times. Yeah. So what I like to do is when these new systems came out, I like to program a hot button. So this F1, if I hit F1 right now, it says enter maintenance programming to operate the function keys. So if I hit enter, Programming mode two, Let me call you and I hit all twos. Oh, not twos, ones. Escape. If I hit programming mode and I hit all ones, now it just so shows just maintenance programming mode, right? Now, if I hit this F1, function key operation and process, this will take that. So now. <laughs> If you start to read, see how that says disabled, there's a trouble, and now that F1 split. Now if I escape out of here, NAC1 disabled. If I hit down, NAC2 disabled. Now you're not using NAC3 and 4 yet, but maybe one day you will be because you, you need stuff down here. There's, you know, right. hit next, there's NAC3, NAC4. So I built it for the future. Now, you hit acknowledge, everything's silent, it shows that you have that activated, it causes data trouble, but it's because things are disabled. It explains things very well. Um, now, you can work and not worry about setting off the system, and if you do set it off, it's going to be just this beeping, all the horns don't go off. So that turned off all the horns. So let's say I have places that in the evening, they do like a, th a theater show or something, and they use fake smoke mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, maybe you got that on film because if we were doing something, that'd be a good information right. there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when you're all done, it's just as easy as you go back, hit the enter, programming mode two, and it's all the ones. And then it says maintenance programming. If you looked around, it's a point program history again. You can hit down walk test system. None of that's important. All you need to do is hit that F1. And then you'll see that disable clear, that clears. And then that trouble's still there because you're in programming mode. But then you escape. And it goes right back to normal. Okay. I figured maybe we can go to a pull station. I can pull a pull station and you can hear what the horns go off. Yeah. And then we can like walk down here and Okay. So we can go to the one like right right here. Good.